Bucky O'Hare started off as a comic book series in the mid-80s. It's about a continuous war taking place between a group of mammals and a group of evil toads in a parallel universe called the Anniverse. It would later become an animated TV series and a video game by Konami on the NES, which we're going to look at here. The title character Bucky is the leader of a crew called the Righteous Indignation. They get attacked by a barrage of evil toads led by their air marshal and all four of Bucky's crew members are kidnapped and held captive on four separate planets and it's up to Bucky to rescue them. The interesting thing here is that you can explore the four planets in the order of your choosing. There's the green planet, the red planet, the blue planet, and the yellow planet. After completing a level you'll rescue one of your comrades and actually be able to use them throughout the game by pressing select to switch characters. After rescuing all four of them you'll encounter four more levels in a rigid sequence. Yeah, it does sound a lot like Mega Man. In fact, there are definitely several similarities, but it is a different game on its own. It's not a blatant ripoff, it just drew inspiration. The game can be described as a fast-paced, action-adventure, side-scrolling shooter. You control Bucky and friends throughout a ton of unique enemies and hazards, collecting power-ups and blasting the shit out of everything. You'll advance through portions of the level which are referenced as acts. Now, you can take a decent amount of hits before you die, but there are a lot of instant death hazards like spikes and bottomless pits, and the game does get really challenging in the second half. So you're gonna die a lot. Thankfully, not only can you continue an infinite number of times after getting a game over, but you'll start out at the beginning of the act and not the whole level. So this sounds like you pretty much have infinite lives since you're always picking up from the same spot. Well, not really. The health power-ups not only fill your health, but they also increase the maximum level of your health bar. When you get a game over, you'll stop back at the default maximum, so that's why the extra life power-ups are important too. The blank power-up is just a point bonus, not really useful unless you're really interested in point totals. Then there's the power-up with the P icon, which will increase the maximum level of your special ability. That's right, not only does each character have their own distinct attacks, they also have special abilities. By holding down the B button, the power meter at the bottom charges up, and when you release it, you'll utilize your special ability. The higher the meter fills up, the more effective the ability becomes. Bucky is obviously your default character, and you'll want to be using him more than anybody else. His bullets are rapid, have excellent range, and you can also fire up as well as low from the ducking position. His specialty is a power jump, which you'll definitely need to get onto platforms unreachable by the normal jump. Blinky, who you'll rescue from the green planet, is a cycloptic robot that fires short range bombs and uses a jetpack to soar through the air, although it doesn't really last very long. Blinky doesn't really come in handy all that much, but he's the only way to get through these ice blocks. Deadeye is a duck, who you'll find on the red planet. He fires shots in three different directions. They cover more ground than Bucky, but the shots don't travel as far and aren't nearly as rapid. He also has the special ability to climb walls for a short period of time. Willy is a teenage geek that somehow got trapped in the universe and is the only human member of the crew. He's found on the yellow planet and carries around a laser gun which can be charged up for a greater shot. Jenny is a cat who is held prisoner on the blue planet. She fires lasers out of what looks like her eyes and has specialty that comes in the form of a chargeable ball that you can control in midair. The thing that sucks though is that you can't move at all while firing this thing and it makes you susceptible to attacks. In fact all the special abilities leave you defenseless while charging them up. It can be pretty frustrating when you have to charge up a lot to make a jump or something and get your ass kicked by toads. Another thing that's frustrating sometimes is switching characters. You can't pause the game to switch, you have to do it on the fly. So sometimes you want to switch to someone in particular while being ambushed, but you'll fuck up and skip right past them and have to go around in a loop. And it's not always easy to remember the rotation, because each time you rescue a new crew member, it takes longer to go around the circle and memorization has to start all over again. It would have been easier to switch in a pause menu, but this is a flaw that can be overlooked. Another flaw that isn't worth getting all pissy about is the controls. It's not so much that they're bad, because really they're not. They're just kind of slippery and it takes some time to get used to in a fast-paced environment. The graphics aren't groundbreaking, but they're more than adequate and there's a lot of detail put into the backgrounds. The soundtrack is pretty badass too. My personal favorite song is The Cell Level, the first one after completing the four planets. While the game is a shooter, there's a lot more to it than just walking around shooting shit up. 
One of my favorite aspects of the game are the wide variety of hazards that you run into that will force you to memorize patterns as well as execute. It adds a ton of substance to the game and a strategic element that works well with the arcade style shoot 'em up, and the ideas are pretty clever and creative too. The first four planets aren't too difficult, but once you advance to the second half of the game, holy shit, you're gonna see this death sequence a lot. Don't let it frustrate you though, as dying many times over is inevitable in figuring out how to beat it. So choosing the order of the four planets isn't terribly important, since you'll probably be using Bucky for about 90% of the game, but for some reason it's impossible to get through these ice blocks on the blue planet unless you have Blinky's bomb, so I suggest going to the green planet first to acquire him. It's also a good entry level to get used to the game's mechanics and such. Toward the beginning there are these cannons coming out of the side of the ground that fire in all directions. If you level with them, you can take them out before you have to worry about dodging all the bullets that'll come when you encounter several at once. You climb this tree where huge ass spiders explode in all directions, so be ready to dodge them. And that beehive isn't decoration. Contact with it will summon up these bees that fly slowly in your direction. When you get to this river area, press down and A to drop onto this log so you can coast across rather than jumping platform to platform where some of these branches collapse under your weight. Later on, you'll jump down this waterfall and all these rocks fall with you. Avoid them and don't touch the flower plant things on the side, they'll hurt you. Soon you'll encounter the boss, and this motherfucker is strong. He carries this big ass boulder that'll kill you in one shot, and even the debris can hurt you. As soon as he throws the boulder, jump over him and stop firing from behind as he runs back and forth shaking up the walls, causing the ceiling chunks to fall down. Leap over him as he passes by and repeat the process until he's dead. So now you've rescued Blinky and have access through the ice blocks on the blue planet. Really there's no big deal which planet you choose next, so I'll just go to the red planet next. This place is filled with fiery pits and lava chunks that get spewed out of the volcanoes in the background. There are spiked rocks that hang from underneath some of the platforms. Keep your eye out for them as they're an instant death. Roll these rocks into the fire pit below to give yourself something to walk on and move ahead. Now this part is a bitch. As you slip down here, this insane rush of lava comes flowing your way, and you have to move your ass or you're done for. It takes not only speed, but memorization too. There's a lot of trial and error with the route you're supposed to take. Follow the linear path and have to split right here, head to the right side and drop down. Never mind the power-ups, you don't have time for any of that shit. Just keep following the path and be sure to hug the corners as close as possible. When you get to these shooting arches of flame, stand in the middle of the platform and duck under it before taking off. You'll ride this rock across these spikes and this giant green boulder comes crashing through. This part's kinda tricky. As soon as you see the boulder, hop on it and walk off it back onto the smaller rock. Then hop back onto it as it rolls back towards you and hop onto this platform up here. Now the green bath is gonna roll back. Just let it pass and get on the next small rock. Get back on greeny, hop across this platform to get back on it, and then duck underneath all these spikes. The boss is... Wow, he looks a lot like that green boulder thing we just saw. It ends up being an odd steel contraption of some kind. Just stand back and fire at the open middle portion while dodging the slow lasers and bouncy ball thing. Then it'll tuck and roll. If it hits you, you're dead. So charge up your power jump from a safe distance and leap over him. Then charge up again as he rolls back across the screen. He'll line back up and pick up where he left off. Once you finish him off, you'll rescue Deadeye. And now onto the blue planet. As you may have guessed, this is an ice slash water based level, and your footing is even more slippery on the frozen ground, so try not to move too fast. Right away you'll run into a blockade of ice blocks. This is where Blinky is most useful, as you can't get through without using his bombs. Then you'll get to this part where there's this wide open space and no platforms, but this giant robotic snake thing comes out of the water and creates a path for you. It also doesn't seem to have a tail, as its trail endlessly continues. Watch out though, while you can run freely on its body, you can't touch its head. So try not to walk too close to the head area, as its patterns will change and other snakes will show up at the same time. But on Act 3, you'll want to move fast or the snake up here will close up your path. Now here's another part where you need Blinky. These toads stack up ice blocks and you have to blast through them. But where the hell do you go from here? Well, Blinky's bombs will tear a hole in the ground if you hit the specific area just right. On the way down, be sure not to jump around too much, cause the ceilings are spiked. 